All right. Nice job, guys. You can go ahead and resettle back in, focus in. We're going to go ahead and, wow, that was cool. Um, and we're going to go ahead and transition into tonight. You guys can stay standing if you would. Um, like I said before, we are so excited about tonight. Tonight is a really special opportunity for us to come together. We're in the middle of the semester. I don't know if you guys realize that. Like, this is like the halfway point. Isn't that crazy? Like, how are we already there? It's wild. But guys, it's just crazy when, you, when we look back and we think a couple, a couple months ago, we had no idea if we were even gonna be able to meet this semester. And it's really special for us to be here in this room tonight with this many people, with this many friends. Um, and I hope you guys are just able to appreciate that. Like, man, it's been such a gift for us to be able to meet together. The things we've already learned together this semester, um, the way that lives have already been changed this semester, the way that lives are gonna continue to change um, as we're seeing community grow and form more at Overflow, we just know that God has some really incredible things ahead of us this semester. And so what we wanted to do tonight is we wanted to take a moment to pause and to celebrate. And so what better way to do that with a night of worship and communion? It's gonna be really, really special. And hey, if you're kind of new to the whole church thing, if you um, maybe haven't been to something quite like this before, I want you to know that that the pressure is off. Um, tonight, I hope it's just an encouragement to you guys. It's a, a refresher to you guys. It's a chance for you to just take a deep breath and just to enjoy where we are right now. I know that there's lots of things going on in your personal worlds. There's lots of things just going on in each of our lives right now, but I believe that God has something special and important for us tonight. So we just wanna be able to focus in on that, even if it's just for an hour. So. One of the things that I love last week, um, Clay was talking to us about the Holy Spirit. And that can be a really um, kind of like mystical idea, right? You know, it's like, we're, we're not really familiar about, with that. We don't always talk about that. But like the special thing is, is as Clay was leading us through John 14 and 15, he talked about how Jesus left us the Holy Spirit. He said, hey, I have even a better, um, someone better coming for you, an advocate, a helper, an encourager, Someone who's gonna give you peace. And I don't know about you guys, but like I could use some peace in my life. And Clay really challenged us last week. He said, um, he said, how would your life look different if you knew that the Holy Spirit, that God was with you? And I think it's been easy in the midst of this past year, in the midst of a pandemic, it's been easy to forget that God is with us. But he's with us right now. He's with us tonight. And I hope we just get a moment to just focus in on that. So communion is gonna be really special. Clay is gonna set that up um, a little bit later. But I love communion. It's just a physical, tangible way for us to remember who God is and what he's done for us. In the same way, we're gonna worship. And a lot of, a lot of us love to worship with our, our hands raised. And once again, like that's not anything mystical, but it is spiritual. It's us reminding ourselves it's like a physical, tangible reminder that God is here with us. And it's a physical, tangible reminder that we can surrender all of these things that are in front of us. The, the junk, the baggage that we're walking in with today, the difficult things that have happened, the things we're nervous about for tomorrow or this upcoming week, we can leave those things aside and we can have confidence that we're not the ones who are in control of those things, that God's in control and so that we can have peace. So um, yeah, I, I encourage you tonight, maybe it's time for you to get a little bit out of your comfort zone. Maybe it is, maybe you've never lifted your hands in worship before, and maybe tonight will be the first time where you can really just kind of um, open up your hands or lift your hands, and that can just be a, a physical, tangible reminder that God's with you and that you can surrender to Him. The same thing with communion. So tonight's just gonna be really special, but before we get started in singing, I'd love to just um, pray with you guys. And if you're comfortable, I'd love for you to open up your hands. And this is just a way, once again, for us to just posture ourselves really clearly before God. So let's pray. God, we're just so grateful to be here tonight. 
You are so good. God, I pray that our open hands tonight can just be a physical posture of surrender. God, the things that we've been holding on to, the things that we've been stressed out about, the things that we don't know what to do with, God, the things that we're fearful of, God, we release those things to you. And even if our hands are open right now, God, still inwardly, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, we, we still might be closed off. God, I pray that tonight you can just start to soften our grip just a little bit, that we can lean into you, that we can trust in you. God, we, we believe that you are a giver, not a taker. You don't wanna take things from us, you wanna give us wholeness. You wanna give us fullness. You wanna give us peace. You wanna give us freedom. You wanna give us love. God, I pray that we rest in that tonight. God, no matter what we've been through today, whether it's been a really good day or a really hard day, God, I pray that we can just leave those things at the wayside. And God, I pray that you just continue to awaken us. Awaken us to the reality that you are here with us, that you love us, and you wanna do an incredible work in and through us. God, we love you. We surrender this whole night to you. And we pray, um, like it says in Psalm 141, God, that our prayer would be lifted to you like incense, that it would be pleasing to you. And God, that we would lift our hands as an offering, an offering of praise to you. God, we love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name, amen.
saints hit the ground So God of revival Pour it out Pour it out
Yeah, the beauty of the cross and what Jesus did is he brought heaven to earth. So we have access to him now. We don't have to wait till that day when we get to heaven, but he's here with us, as Zach said earlier. And I love how singing is just a reminder of how relational our God is, that he loves to hear. He doesn't need our praise. His goodness, his worthiness, what he's done for us is not contingent upon us praising him, but he loves it. He loves hearing us sing. So as we sing this chorus again, would you raise your loudest voice? You can sing a new melody even if you want because he loves it. He loves to hear the praise of his children. Praise him because he's good, because he's worthy, because he's here, because of what he's done for you, because of what he brought you out of, because he's what he's going through you, going through with you. He's with you. He's here tonight. We sing, oh, praise him.
able to sit in this, to understand just what we were singing. There's nothing that he won't do to come to you, that there's nothing that will stand in his way for you to understand that his love is for you. This love is so deep, it's so wide, it's so high, and it's all for you. You are firmly planted in the love of God. That's the foundation that you have firmly planted on. This love that is not shaking, it's not gonna waver in any way. It's constant, it's steady. His love makes room for the empty places that you're feeling. Maybe the, his love makes room in the things that you're confused. There's enough room for that. extravagant love for us.
Thank you for your words, for your truth, and for your love. There's nothing unseen. You see it all, God. God, I pray that we can declare that consistently. May we never forget, may we never forget just the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can go ahead and see. Thank you. Overflow, you guys can have a seat. How are we doing tonight, Overflow family? Woo, come on. Who's excited to be here? Okay, okay. That's what I was wanting to hear. Hey, y'all, tonight um, is a special night, a night that we get to take this breath, kind of come up for air, mark a moment. And tonight, what we are actually doing is overflow is we are sharing a meal together. Y'all ready for a meal? Okay. It's not a big meal, but it's a significant meal. Tonight, we're going to come around the tables and we're going to celebrate communion together. And the reality is, I know for you, uh, many of you, we actually all come from a variety of backgrounds, right? Church backgrounds, growing up, what we experienced in church, things we did, that we didn't do, things we understand, don't understand. And communion is probably one of those things that's so varied for all of us, our experience, understanding. And tonight, I love to just invite you as Overflow family, just to kind of step in and let's take this meal together the way that we're gonna do it today. Right, we're not gonna get to explain everything away. You might have questions, but I just wanna ask you to kind of trust us and trust God in sharing this meal together today. And this meal is a significant meal, right? It's called the Lord's Supper. And where we get it from is what we've been kind of looking at in the Gospels, right? Before Jesus was crucified, the, the night before he was arrested, he shared a meal with his disciples, right? It's right before what we studied, what Jesus taught on the vine and the branch. It's right before Jesus taught the disciples about the Holy Spirit. They shared a meal together. And the meal that they shared together, anybody know what meal they shared together that night? Anybody want to tell me what the name of that meal was? I heard like a little grumble. Passover. Is that what I heard? Yeah? Okay, cool. So they shared the Passover meal, right? And the reality is, man, we understand communion in this context, typically. Coming to church, sitting in pews, um, having it served in some uh, form or fashion. But the way that Jesus and his disciples would have shared this meal was around a table. Literally sitting or actually lying around a table. They would have shared this big meal, this Passover meal, this ancient meal that the people of God observed for thousands of years. And this Passover meal that they took was a meal that they would take in order to remind themselves or actually to retell a story, right? And this Passover meal had all these different elements to it, all these different foods, uh, all these different blessings and questions and answers and all these crazy things that were very, very interesting. And in this meal, they would share different elements uh, from uh, they would share, uh, they would dip like lettuce leaves into a, a, a salt water bowl. And while they were dipping this lettuce leaf into this bowl of really high salt water, they would eat it. It's nasty, salt water, right? If you ever like drink water in the ocean, because you wipe out on a wave, it's like, oh, it's gross. And that was gross. And it was reminding them of when Joseph was sold into slavery. And his brothers took that uh, uh, technicolor uh, tunic, remember the multicolor coat that his dad made for him? And they sold him into slavery. They took that coat, they dipped it in blood, which tastes like salt water. And they brought it back to their dad and said, look, Joseph has been killed, uh, a lion ate him. And they would eat that lettuce with the salt water to remind them of that happening. Later in the meal, they would uh, eat um, bitter herbs. And bitter herbs are what you think. They're herbs that are really, really bitter. Anybody like bitter flavor? Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. You don't like it, come on, tell the truth. Love it, cool. Most of us don't like bitter. Actually, uh, other places in the world, they, they do like bitter flavors, right? This is so bitter, it would make you cry. The bitter herbs were so bitter, they would make you cry. And so you're sharing this meal and you're cry everyone's crying, right? Can you just imagine all of us crying right now? 
right? Uh, what they were doing is they were remembering the tears shed in Egypt when the people of God were enslaved and in bondage and treated harshly, this bitterness that they experienced. And so that's what Jesus was doing that Thursday night before he was arrested, before he was crucified. They were sharing this meal, retelling the story of God's people going into slavery, but then being brought out of slavery and experiencing freedom and being brought into the promised land. And they would eat the bread and they would drink different cups along the way. And during this meal, Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, "Um, yeah, so y'all think that this meal is about what has happened, that it's this retelling of a story. But actually this meal, it's about me, right? It wasn't just retelling an ancient story. It's actually foretelling my story, Jesus said. And he would pick up the bread. He would say that this bread, this is me. This bread represents me, right? The people would have understood the unleavened bread as the bread that they baked before um, they finally got freed out of Egypt. They had to make some quick bread to give them life and sustenance when they went on their journey. And Jesus is saying, hey, you thought that was about that, but it's actually about me. Like I'm the bread of life, broken for you so that you could have life, right? And then he would take the cup. He would say, you thought that the cup represented the blood that was painted over the doorposts of the people of God in Egypt so that the, their uh, sons would be spared. They wouldn't have death, that death would pass over them. That's the Passover. He said, yeah, but that blood pointed to me, my blood shed for you. And so what Jesus was doing is he was saying, man, this, this meal, this story is all about me. It's actually retelling my story today. And so today for us, Overflow, as followers of Jesus, um, man, you know, remembering this this story of God's people in bondage, set free, that's our story, right? We were in bondage to sin. We've been set free through Jesus. And so what we do when we come around the table tonight is that we are retelling ourselves the story of Jesus, We're retelling the story that Jesus took on flesh, right? That he he took on humanity, he took on a body so that his body would be broken for us, so that we could have life in him. We're retelling us ourselves the story that Jesus shed his blood, that he poured out his blood on the cross so that our sins would be forgiven and that we could be made right with God. We're retelling ourselves the story of Jesus. And the beautiful thing about Passover is that Passover happened every year, once a year. The same meal, the same blessings, the same rituals, the same foods, the same story, the same answers to the same questions. And we're like, man, that's boring. No, that's how you learn. That's a rhythm of being reminded of what we need to be reminded of, of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And so tonight, as we come and we share this meal together, Uh, We are retelling the story of Jesus in order to, number one, to remember, to remember, to remember all that Jesus has done for us, to remember that Jesus went to the cross to take on our sin, to lay down his life so that we could have life, to remember that he shed his blood to cover our sin so that we would be forgiven and cleansed and made right with God. And so we retell the story so we can remember. But we also, in a strange way, in this meal, in the Passover, and now in communion for us, is that we don't just retell the story, we actually reenact the story, right? So we, so we, have, um, we have bread. We have bread that's been broken. We have uh, grape juice, <laughs> um, grape juice. Um, that represents Jesus' blood. It's this, it's this reenactment, right? And in reenacting what Jesus did for us, what we do is we come and we take and we actually eat the bread, right? We don't just remember the story. We don't just retell the story. We, we consume it. And we, we take the cup and we drink the cup. We reenact not only what Jesus did for us, we get to reenact our faith in Jesus, that we are trusting that his body was broken for us and we are trusting by faith his blood covers us. We're receiving it into the deepest parts of who we are. And so that's what we are doing tonight. 
We're retelling the story of Jesus so that we would remember, and we're reenacting the story of Jesus so that we would receive. And here's the crazy thing, Overflow, is that, um, man, as I was praying about this today, this idea of like receiving was like just so heavy on my heart. Because I just started thinking like, what in the Christian life do we not receive? And I was like, man, everything about the Christian life is received. Y'all, y'all, we receive salvation, right? It's a free gift. We receive it. We receive forgiveness, right? We receive our identity. We receive a community and family. Right? We, we receive inheritance. We receive a mission and a purpose. Y'all, the Christian life is about receiving what God has done for us. And this meal celebrates receiving all that Jesus has done for us. Does that make sense? And so tonight, that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna come to the table. We're gonna share a meal together. We're gonna remember and we're gonna receive it. And for some of us tonight, Maybe you've never taken communion. And here's the, here's the thing is like, if y'all, if anybody feels uncomfortable taking communion tonight, you don't have to do it. Um, I'll, I'll explain how we're gonna do it in a second, but you can, you can stay in your seat. You can kind of come through the line, but not grab it. No, no pressure. But some of you tonight, I think are gonna take communion for the first time. And maybe that's just because your church tradition, you just didn't do this um, or whatever. Uh, or maybe it's because um, this, this year, like this semester, has been like the start of your relationship with Jesus. Like you believing that Jesus died for you and that his blood like forgives you of your sins and makes you right with God, this is a new thing for you. And so tonight you're gonna get to receive that. Or, or maybe you're here tonight and you're like, I haven't done that yet. Like I haven't put my faith in Jesus. Like I haven't received anything from Jesus. I don't have a relationship with him. And I would just say maybe tonight is the night that you make that decision that you realize that like, man, our sin, y'all, it enslaves us. We are in bondage to sin without Jesus. We're separated from God. But when we trust in what Jesus did for us and we receive it, he makes us new, he makes us whole, he makes us right with God. And tonight, taking communion might be your first act of just taking that and receiving that and believing that to be true for you tonight. So this is what, this is what Jesus said, and then I'll explain how we're gonna do it. This is Matthew 26, verse 26. And it says, now as they were eating the meal, this Passover meal, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, and we'll bless it in just a second, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat this, this is my body. And he took a cup. And he had given thanks, after he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And so that's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna bless it, we're gonna receive it, the, the bread and the cup. And what I want you to do is kind of uh, three things for all of us uh, in the room online, is um, I want you to take time before you take um, the, the bread and the cup um, to, to remember, just to think and remember all that Jesus has done for you. I want you to retell yourself the story. I told it to you, but I want you to retell it to yourself. And then I want you to read scripture. And it'll be on the screens uh, for us in the room. It'll be on the screens for you at home. Uh, I want you to just read it, each word. Take it in. And then just take a moment to pray and just talk to God. And maybe in that talking to God, it's just, maybe, maybe it is just, hey God, like I'm so thankful for this. I'm so thankful for what you've done. Uh, maybe it's just to, to confess sin. Maybe it's just to confess your need for Jesus. Like we all still need Jesus. And just to thank God for Jesus. And then when you're ready, after you've gotten the cup, uh, the cup and the bread, and you've uh, thought about it, and you've read the scripture and you've prayed, then you, all, by yourself, you can go ahead and just eat the bread and then drink the cup. Father God, um, we just thank you for this moment. We thank you for this night, God. Um, God, we thank you for the bread and the cup that we get to take tonight to remember and to receive. And God, we just pray um, just a blessing over it. In fact, um, we bless you. We bless your name, God. That You provide the bread and you provide the juice. That you provided Jesus, his body broken for us and you provided Jesus' blood spilled for us that through his body, we would have life, and through his blood, we would have forgiveness. And tonight, we wanna to remember it and receive it anew.
and celebrate all that you have done for us in Jesus. This is what we ask. This is what we pray. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Amen. This time our interns are going to dismiss you to come and get the bread and the cup and come back to your seats. And I'll be back up in a few minutes. Thanks, guys. If, uh, if you haven't um, taken the bread and drank the cup yet, you can do that right now in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. And um, y'all, the scripture that we had up on the screen, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it's a beautiful picture and it says this. It says, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. That is the gospel. Jesus, who never sinned, lived the perfect life, became sin for us, became the offering for our sin. And tonight, by taking that bread and drinking that cup, we remember that, right? We received it again, just receiving it fresh. And now in a second, we're gonna respond in worship because God is that good. And he did everything that we needed to be made right with him. Let me pray for us, Overflow. Father God, we just thank you so much for your son Jesus, for his body that was broken and his blood that was shed, that we receive. And God, I know tonight that um, in in a lot of ways it causes a sense of maybe maybe guilt or shame, but God, that's not of you. God, you you gave yourself freely for us. And tonight we just want to receive it with joy and gratitude. And so Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for this rhythm of just being reminded and receiving afresh. God, for the 18 and 25 year old in the room who took communion for the first time, I just pray that this was a, a significant moment I pray for the one who has just recently began a relationship with you through faith in your son, Jesus. I pray that tonight would just be a celebration, joy, together as a family. And so God, we thank you. We sit and we stand in your grace and in gratitude. And we wanna respond in worship. Father God, we love you. We thank you for Jesus, and it's his name we pray. Amen, 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 overflow. Hey, as we kind of move into this last section of our night together, and we respond in worship, um, I just wanna say that I believe that, um, that God is not done doing work in your life this semester, this year. I believe that God has more for you, that God has more for us. My question is, are we ready? Are are we ready to receive and to step into what God has for us? And so tonight we take a moment to breathe and to pause, to remember and to celebrate. 
And now as we move out, I want us to kind of move out ready for what God has for us, ready for what He wants to do in us, ready for what He wants us to give up, what He wants us to receive, what He wants us to step into. And so as we step into this last song, that's the posture I want you to have. Are you ready for what God wants to do in you? And if you need to sit and pray, if you need to just kind of get on your knees or you need to stand up and sing this, I just wanna invite you to worship in this posture of availability, however God is leading you. Let's sing this, let's declare this, let's go out responding and worship together tonight, Overflow. Let's go.
We have a God who 
is high and lifted up. And He calls us up, right? He calls us to live this new life, this life that Jesus provided for us, not just a life simply saved from something, but created for something more. And I think that God wants to do a work in you guys for the rest of the semester, because God wants to do a work through you, to the world around you. A beacon of hope, a beacon of life, of rescue, a peace. We receive that from Jesus, and then we're called to live it out, y'all, in the world He's placed us in. And I just can't wait to see what God is gonna continue to do in and through each and every one of you for the rest of the semester. Y'all in for that? All right. Thank you guys for just being a part, for stepping into something different tonight, for worshiping with us and, and taking communion with us. I hope that you are encouraged. I hope that your heart is full. And now let's, let's leave with full hearts, right? Like you leave a meal with a full stomach. Let's leave tonight with full hearts in love with Jesus loving the world around us.